stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Here, Present. Here and present. <laughs> Here. Here. And every crack. Thank you. We have no communications this evening. So we'll go right to public comment. Residents are invited to address the city commission. Please limit your comments to five minutes. State your name and address. Sir. Larry Viscorner, 415 Carroll Street. Uh, First question is for Mr. Gaber. Last year we had that article about a little bit of a problem on the uh, cleaning the sidewalks on the bridges, north and south. I checked with the county last year. They said the county is not that it's not their responsibility. Is that correct? Yeah. The, the, the state said they're they're done with doing that cleaning, right? Okay. On our last snowfall that we had, which is the only one we had, who did that this year, cleaned it? It was the city I, or the county? Who did the what now? The cleaning of the sidewalks. They did clean it this time. The county? No, no the, the city. city. Yeah, I mean, the cities had done it last year as well. Yeah. The problem with that south bridge is you can't get a piece of equipment on it. it they have to shut traffic down. No, I'm talking about the north bridge. The North Bridge, you can't get a piece of equipment on the sidewalk either. The city, the city, it's not wide enough. I brought that up last year. The city, I know you did. The city did clean it this year because I'm always on it because I walk that bridge all the time. So did I. I'm and sure. so, yes, as far as I know, they did the job this year to try to get it clean. So that last snowstorm. Did. Okay, that's right. Because yeah. the county won't do it. Yeah. Now, the problem is, depending on how many times the county goes through, they just throw it up on the bridge and keep on going. I mean, on the sidewalk. Uh -oh. I don't know which one. <laughs> Hold, please. I think it's the. <laughs> there you go. I gets the next minute. No, nope, you're uh, <laughs> You're magnetized. <laughs> Probably coming from the radio room. Well, I, I think you'll get extra minutes in this case. You should stop it then. Okay. I stop it. Applause for this message. Yes. <laughs> Have advertisement. Now. Okay, the official's timeout is over. Are you five minutes up yet? They're up. No, she's got the timer for you, sir. <laughs> Go ahead, continue. Please. So, anyway, so uh, the city cleaned that North Bridge up. Yeah. Okay, they, all right. They did a very good job. Okay. And it, it's a tough one to clean because they actually have to shut the road down and get right. a truck up on an angle to do it. Lower through there and I yeah. That. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like I said, they did a very good job. Uh, The W also did a very good job with their limited resources. The snowstorm we had. I mean, they were they did a very good job. All the streets and that they plowed them and that you know. And I, I don't think anybody had any complaints. If they did, they shouldn't have complaints. Yeah, um, it was kind of like a perfect storm. We got right. we had two major water leaks, eight inches of snow, and a four-day holiday on both ends <laughs> of that week. So it, it was kind of tough. <laughs> Well, I think the citizens from city should be proud of the uh, okay. thankful of, of what DPW has done with their limited resources. Uh, yeah. One more, one, one more item, please. <clears throat> I was here last year about uh, people not cleaning up there to their dogs, walking the sidewalks. Uh, Jerry Packer did an article about that. And now that uh, the city did a good thing when they put the dog station cleanings up in the parks with the bags and that, you know, and it was used very much. And people told me, they said, good idea you made, you know. And I said, okay, great. But now that since uh, 
getting cold again. People haven't been cleaning up after their dogs again because, well, <laughs> other walkers, I'm, I'm sure they know that. You know it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they're going back to the old ways and not cleaning up to their dogs. And uh, they're messing up on the sidewalks. People don't like to walk on it. The, the business owners don't want to walk on it. And we're getting tired of walking on frozen chocolate bars. <laughs> and it's being dragged into the restaurants and the businesses and that, you know, and uh, I think it should be enforced in some way if they could. Because There's not a reason where they where they can't clean up after their pets, and I'm a I'm a dog walker myself, and I carry two bags, of, two plastic bags, a bag myself the day, you know, and uh, I just wish it would be enforced in some way. We'll we'll attempt to look at it, but it's difficult. I I, I mean it, it it really is. So. I agree with it, but I'm just saying if you get to put it out there, maybe uh, people will start hearing from somebody else, you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Everybody else did a good job. Anyone else? Seeing no one, we will move on. Next on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda for Thursday, January 17th. Support. Motion and support. Additions, deletions, comments. Hearing none. All in favor of approving the agenda? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carries. Next, we have approval of the minutes from the City Commission regular meeting on December 20th, 2012. I move it. Approve the minutes. Second. <laughs> See what happens when you miss a meeting? He takes over. <laughs> okay, any comments? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the City Commission regular meeting minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Next, we have the consent agenda. First, we have the departmental activity <laughs> reports. Next, we have the Marine City Area Fire Authority run report from December of 2012. We have a business license application for BB Bradford Sales Incorporated at 226 South Water. We have a business license application for Waterford Financial Management, LLC, at 201 Broadway. We have a special event, Lions White Cane Sale, which will take place on April 26 and 27 around the community. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Carries. No unfinished business takes us to new business. First up is Maritime Days 2013, and I believe we have Melissa here this evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here today to announce that we have finalized our date for Maritime Days 2013. It will be the first weekend of August. It will be August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, we have a signed contract with uh, Schmidt Amusements for a carnival company. They're out of Standish, Michigan. Um, they're a pretty nice uh, group. They've got some nice rides, a little bit bigger than we saw last year, um, a, little bit, a, a lot pro more professional this year than we saw last year as well. And um, we're starting our fundraising campaign a little early this year. Um, if, I don't know if you've seen the signs out already, but we've got a sweetheart dinner um, at the Marine City Fish Company, February 11th, that's a Monday, for $50 for a couple or $30 for an individual with a single entree. Um, it's a great opportunity to try a local business if you haven't and to support a local business. And then a portion of the proceeds are going to come back to Maritime Days as well. Um, our volunteers are also going to be out um, 
visiting our businesses and um, selling our advertising signs. If you've seen them in our businesses the last couple years, uh, it's a, one of our biggest fundraising that we have. Um, we introduced $50 for an individual family this year. Plus, we've got um, three additional tiers for businesses. But um, and the last thing I really want to ask is if the city would consider being a co-sponsor for the event. Um, we money is always an issue. Um, the event fee is always an issue. Um, just times are tough for everybody, and um, I know we. Our fundraising efforts were didn't come in as great as we'd like last year, um, but that's why we're starting early and we're trying some new things as well this year. But I just I wanted to come to the city and see you know what I had to do to see if you were interested in co-sponsoring the event with us. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what if there's paperwork I have to fill out or anything like that, but other than naming us as a co-sponsor, what would you be asking from the city? Financial support fin or? Financial support with uh, the event fee. Um, I think at a co-sponsor, it would be a 50% reduction. Oh, for the police fire, uh, mm -hmm. the DPW, okay. Yeah. Um, I, can I ask about for insurance reasons? Is that why you're asking for? No, the city oh. has to be named on our insurance anyway. So that wouldn't be a. Just trying to say I mean, money. that's not what the, we're not responsible for your insurance. No. Okay. All right. So you're pretty much what Commissioner Hendrick had said. You're looking for the city's support in terms of the cost of police and yep. and everything. Yes. Um, I mean, that's it's a longstanding tradition for Maritime Days. It, it's a tourist, uh, a big tourist attraction locally for us. It, it's helping our businesses. It's helping our tourism. And it's just great promotion for the city as a whole. Um, and you know we want to keep it going, but we're just we'd like to ask your help. Has that has the amount been calculated yet of no. what it would cost? Okay, so we have time to look into that. Yes. What was the amount last year? I don't know. Do you know didn't I didn't? I mean, year? this is all we had for. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> Do you recall what the costs were last year? Please, did you fire? Believe it was around. Thirty-five hundred dollars. Okay. Um, could could I ask that you put together a presentation with expected costs and layouts and that sort of thing? Absolutely. And return to us so we've got something to work from. Absolutely. Um, try to get that before a meeting, mm -hmm. you know, with the packet so we can review it. Yep. I think that's the best way for us to evaluate and give it fair thought. Absolutely. Would anybody disagree with that idea? No. No. Uh, when, when do you anticipate uh, putting the application in, uh, the final application? You just said you need, I think you got some time. Yeah, you got a little bit of time yet, so. But give us a little bit of heads up ahead of time. And just get the preliminary. We do our budget in, in April, generally. Right. I mean, that's going to be the. That'll be the next fiscal year. Right. Okay. So. So it's, you're probably going to do such a good job of fundraising, you won't need it. Yeah, you, you're going to come back to us and tell us you won't need us anyway. So. We would love to be able to say that, but. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right. That would be your best bet. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions or anything? Keep up the good work. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have a request for financial support for Discover the Blue campaign. Requesting $2,500, and we have Ms. Georgia here tonight, too. So I think you all uh, received some information mm -hmm. uh, from me that has uh, a number of uh, uh, some data that goes along with, and you can see what um, this goes toward. Um, and I think you got the one with the, you got the um, billboards for five last year. Mm -hmm. And there's no limit on that number. Any uh, number of events, you know, bigger events that Marine City has, we'll get time on that. Uh, on that billboard, I did want to bring up there was some website data uh, sheet that looked like this, 
and that was a snapshot. That's from the uh, BlueWire.org, which is Discover the Blue in our regional tourism website. I wanted to point out, and they called me this morning because she said, I realized you were going to a meeting tonight, and we realized in the fall that our data was not good. So the numbers that you're looking at is approximately 50% of what actually hit that. They changed websites over, and when they made the switch over, she said it something got goofed up. It was not recording all the hits to every page, you know, to the page on the website. And to the best of their estimation, it's recorded about 50% of the traffic through that website. So it actually looks a lot better than what you're <laughs> looking at there. Um, and I don't know if there, if there are any more questions um, about that. I did, uh, with the cover letter, kind of went into that. Uh, there was also the, um, uh, the program components. It was a 2012-13 because that's how they run their year. Um, I think it's, you know, spring. Uh, again, uh, there were things I couldn't send along. The phone book, I've got a copy of the phone book here, so if you wanted to see all the pages, but you might have seen it in your own phone book. Uh, those things are all being duplicated again this year. They have uh, some additions to it that weren't listed. Uh, Michigan Travel Ideas, which is um, a tourism publication, will now be part of the Pure Michigan, and it will be the um, official travel guide. And Discover the Blue will have a full page ad in that, which will mention Marine City again. And again, that's all to drive traffic to bluewater.org, which is our regional tourism <coughs> site. And uh, then that results in those hits on those web, you know, on the uh, website up there for the Marine City pages. Um, let's see, is there something else? Midwest Living uh, website uh, is going to have an ongoing virtual tour for bluewater.org, which of course includes Marine City as well. So those are some additional things that I don't believe are listed in the uh, program for the coming year that you have in front of you. So those are things, they, they keep adding <coughs> anything that they can add to it, they keep adding to it. And again, when Marine City is involved with uh, the regional tourism through Discover the Blue, that connects us to, um, bluewater.org connects us to Pure Michigan as well. So people can link through and just like two clicks from Pure Michigan as well to get to Marine City's information. And of course, uh, this is tourism. We see it as economic development for Marine City. Uh, we support uh, you know, the, the community as a whole, uh, our, our <coughs> events and activities as a whole. Uh, within the Chamber Office, we spend a lot of time every year compiling information about our activities, events, schedules. We have to, in turn, we have to provide that you know, to the regional tourism. Uh, without Discover the Blue, we would not be on the tourism map as such in, uh, in the region. And a lot of our uh, Pure Michigan stuff would probably go away as well because nobody would be feeding into the system. We feed it to Blue Water, Blue Water feeds it to um, Pure Michigan, Pure Michigan then does their thing. So um, I don't know if there's any other questions about it. Mr. Hamburg? Um, is this it for the whole year? Is it? This 2,500? Yes. Um, do you have a detailed budget of how this money is spent? Oh. I know a lot of communities are asking for that and they're not getting it. The, well, we'd have to get that from Blue Water Area Convention Visitors Bureau. Well, um, they, they, they wouldn't be able to uh, break it down to what that $2,500. That goes into the pool of money from all the communities that participate and then that pool of money is used to pay for all the things that are listed here. So, and I'm not sure. I've never asked for a, a break of their budget. I've never seen a breakdown totally of their budget. I see the what they provide us, what we get from it, which I think is a lot for 2,500. You know, well, it's, it's more than that. But um, I do go to TIFA. We split this between the two. We ask TIFA to, for support as well. And uh, so that was my next question. The total cost is 43. The 1,800. Additional is the coming from the system. 700 additional. It ends up being 700 additional. Seven. That's for support. We have to write text. We have to take photos. We have to okay. give them photos. We have to get the data that they need. We have to well, put schedules together. It so. says here $4,300. And yes. you're asking for 25 from us. Yeah, and 25 from TIFA, that makes 5000 So okay. there's 700 above the actual cost of, oh, I see. The, okay. gotcha. of our investment in Discover Blue. And that's the same. We haven't, they haven't asked to charge us anymore since the inception of the program, and we haven't asked anymore since the inception of the program. Any other questions? No. Commissioner Miller? Yeah, where is the $700? Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm understanding. Okay, $2,500 and $2,500. Yep. So then you have $700 left over. 
Yes, and that's why I was just saying that. We use that because we have a paid staff person. So we use that to help pay for her time to take photographs, write text, get schedules okay, so together. Okay, so then it's not left over. No, no, it's not the left over. It all gone. goes towards us because to, I mean, we could give them the $4,300, but if we didn't give them any information about Marine City to go with that, they there wouldn't be anything, for, you know, we wouldn't get anything out of it. So they need our schedules. They need photographs. They need the text. So when you, they, there's a, a visitor's guide, a Blue Water Area Visitor's Guide. So when you read about Marine City in there, we write that. We provide that text to them. So somebody has to spend the time and create that text that goes in there or in wherever else that Marine City appears. So there's time that's spent, you know, on our end to support being in Discover the Blue. So they, they don't have photographs of Marine City. We provide photographs of Marine City. Okay. Uh, another question. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, the local merchants or whatever? Are you going to give a, um, a lot of uh, spot in your articles for the different merchants well, and restaurants or whatever? One thing, that, one thing that we give with Discover the Blue is our, our businesses are all uh, able to post their businesses. Oh, well, anything that's tourism related. So I kind of go the three R's and an A, retail, restaurant, recreation, and accommodations. Those businesses all can be listed, at, and most of them are, and mm -hmm. we keep reminding people as frequently as we can to make sure that they're there and their, their information's up to date on the bluewater.org website. If you went right there now, you could go to Marine City and you could look for Marine City restaurants. You could look for Marine City uh, motels. You could for, look for Marine City you know, shopping options or museums. Or and, and let me add, if you go to the insert that she's got here for the page views, you can see things like the uh, Sweet Tooth is, hit, is in there, the yes. antique warehouse. Yep. Things like that. It, it all directs. But now here's another thing. Would they be paying you advertising? Mm -mm. No, they get, as part of this investment that well, we so made. In other words, we're going to benefit the businesses as well by giving the 2500 Yes, they They don't have invested. to pay for a small ad. No. They have or, opportunities to do that in different things if they choose. But some of the basic things, that, like that website, that is given. Right. That's part of what, when we pay this $4,300, that's part of it. Our businesses, tourism-related businesses, get listed for free on there. Uh, once in a while, there's, there's you know, like a, a charge if they want to do something special, because a couple years ago, they did um, some virtual tours, and they had some grant money, and I think it was like $99 or something. They right. had somebody come in do a virtual tour of their business, and those uh, tours are still there. If you go and you click on, say, the Heather House, I think they have, they're one of the ones with the virtual mm -hmm. tour, that you'll click on there and you click on the video and it actually takes you around the building, takes you inside, and you go around a circle. Uh, Vera Grace Emporium is one of them. They took advantage of this really low-cost opportunity to do that. And it's been a couple of years and those tours are still on there for those businesses. And, uh, but their basic listings on there, and I think there might be a photograph as well, and you know what they do, that's provided as part of this in all of our businesses, any business here that's... Uh, Tourism related gets that included. Now, so and on the other hand, if we their only cost is a membership in the chamber. Then, pardon? Their only cost is membership in they the chamber. They don't have to be a member in the chamber. They don't have to, to be a no, member. No, not for Discover the Blue. That's open to the whole, whole community, uh, regardless. The Chamber of Commerce, we've just taken it on as making sure this happens, and that we Marine City is there. If Marine City wasn't included in that, like Marysville, it's not anymore. Because nobody <coughs> pays for them to be there. They're just not there. And so all these businesses that they're uh, listed on there and people can look it up are gone. If people go to our to bluewater.org, which is our regional tourism site, there would be no Marine City. So, you know, we, we take this on, but again, it's, it's a lot of money for us. We are volunteer driven. We do try to maintain an office because we feel that it provides a, a good service in the community. Um, we're a business organization, but we also do some community, you know, residential stuff. The phone calls we get all the time, we, we're doing referrals all the time. If it's back to the city, you know, they have a question, they don't know who to call, they call us. So we send people to the library, we send them to the city, we send them to the community mental health. We, whatever it is that they're looking for, we provide that as well, even though we are supposed to be a business support organization. But anyway, back to this. It does support our entire community. There's no uh, limits on that whatsoever. All of our festivals and other summer events oh, are yeah. listed as well. We have to <clears throat> ask the groups. I mean, we start, if, they, if they're not on a set date every year, at the, in the fall, we start hounding them about their dates <laughs> because it's like right. we have to have them before the first of the year so they can get into these things. 
Uh, online can be updated all the time, but the print publications that go along with Discover the Blue, we need those dates so that we can provide them you know, up there so that they can get it printed and our events uh, show up. My next question would be to you, John. If we approve this, where would the money come out of the general You have $3,500 in promotional right. expenses. For oh, we do commission. have 2500 is covered, and then we have uh, $1,000 left over. You still have $1,000? Right. Yeah. Based on yeah, we budget this is, this is budget. that kind of thing. It is budget. It is budget. That's budget. what I want. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't know no, if we had this budget or not. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd just like to make one comment. I mean, without a detailed budget of how this money is spent, I'm, I'm going to go along with a lot of the other people in the county that have been asking for this information and not getting it. Um, I want to see the detail of how it goes, and without that, I just can't. Uh, I'm not going to support it. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a great thing. I'm, I'm glad you guys volunteered to take it on. I mean, we don't really have a lot of ways to market Marine City. This is one great opportunity, and it doesn't cost us all a lot. Yeah, that's what we feel, that for $4,300, we get five events up on these billboards. That wouldn't pay for that, no. <laughs> let alone everything else right. that we no. get out of it. And, so. and it's, re it's recurring. I mean, it's not like it's up there for... A minute or two it's up there oh, yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's a digital billboard, digital so billboard it appears, right. and then you know it'll appear again and it'll appear didn't, again. And didn't we have people telling us last year that they saw it when they came in through Ohio I remember somebody coming oh, somebody in saw, yeah, coming in to the to the chamber office and told us yeah, they, they saw they, it as soon as they yeah. hit from it's Ohio interesting um, we do get um, we do get people that on occasion we find out like directly because it's really hard because it's right. promoting and a lot of what we do the marketing committee too be, does marketing and promotion of Marine City outside of this as well and every once in a while somebody will actually mention it you know which is good we know that because uh, it's always hard it's not like we said you know you can't come to Marine City unless you turn this coupon in and then we know you know right. so uh, but we do get uh, you know businesses telling me that they they under the radar that it took us a year <laughs> of hounding those right. guys to come to Marine City I was just speaking with Heather Bach this morning at the Heather House and she said she's still getting phone calls she goes like I can tell people still are going to that website and watching that show because I'll get another yep. I'll get phone calls and she's still getting it and that was um, in September that that well the fish company told me they get at least two a week mm -hmm. from that because they mm -hmm. keep replaying it and oh, yeah it's and it's available on demand at yep. any time if you go under the radar I think we're episode 301 we we're the first episode of the third year and so right. every time somebody sees it We've got, in, in, I don't know if everyone saw it, but it was a great, uh, we, we followed Lansing. And we just looked really a lot more fun than Lansing tonight. It was, it was kind of nice. Yes. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, I'd just like to say this is a lot of value for what we're getting. I mean, as somebody that has to take out advertising, uh, I have yeah. an advertising budget. I have to, even a quarter column yellow pages ad in mm -hmm. one book is, you know, I think cost me like, who knows, twelve hundred a year, right. or yeah. just for one little ad, one book. So yep. it's a it's a lot of advertising for the money. I think it's well it, worth it. It really is. I mean, when this came along, we were just um, kind of astounded. I was kind of suspicious of it. I'm like, yeah, really, <laughs> for this kind of money? But again, working cooperatively, there's strength in numbers, and mm -hmm. um, and they have so they have funding sources that we can't have, and they and they just use it all and. Right. Uh, we think it's a wonderful thing, and that's why it's been a, a mission of mine with the chambers to make sure that this keeps happening every year and that we got to a place where we could have some staff in there that's their responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that we hold up our end of it, too. Well, I know when I go for my walks, it was difficult to park on Water Street. I have mm -hmm. to believe this contributes. Space. You know, I sat down, Jim, this morning, and I was writing some things down in comparison <coughs> from five years ago to now, you know, things that have changed. It's really been incredible, and I think it's been, you know, this cooperative sort of effort, the, the city, the community organizations, the chamber, this opportunity for this regional tourism buy-in at such a low cost. It's, it's working. In, this is all in very bad economic times. In mm -hmm. Green City, it's been, we've had new businesses coming in, successful businesses, and uh, it's been very exciting, actually. And when I go to meetings around the county and... Uh, places, it, it, it's the first thing people say to me, well, it's, you know, I see you get another new place in Marine City, or I haven't been to this place yet, and now it's the Snug Theater everybody's asking about when mm -hmm. you see, saw the article. So it's, uh, it's cool to be from Marine City right now, <laughs> and we want to keep that going. Yep. That, excuse me, I think it's important that we um, continue to support our, our businesses in this community, too, by, by offering this. So I make a motion that we um, support the Discover Blue campaign 
um, to the amount of $2,500. Second. Okay, we have a motion in support. Any more discussion? Yeah, I just want to say that, uh, you know, this is, it's important to, to, you know, have a vision for the economic future of, of our city, and I think that tourism is a big part of that. And uh, what we've seen over the past couple of years, uh, it really has been remarkable for, for people that have, have lived here, uh, you know, for a long time. I've lived here my entire life. I've never seen it as busy as I've seen it in the last couple of years. And efforts like this are uh, are definitely a part of that. And uh, in, we've got businesses like the Snug that are choosing to come to Marine City, and, right. and reasons like this are a big part of that. That's right. And you know we have to keep in mind that um, you know for an investment like this, um, we're bringing people in from outside to spend their money in Marine City, and that's how you actually generate wealth in in a community. If we're just trading our money amongst each other, then then there's no growth and uh, when when you get people to come in and spend their money from out of town that's that's how you actually generate wealth in an area and actually you know uh, create opportunities for people to uh, start businesses we've had uh, plenty of local people that have uh, um, opened up new businesses here and, and had opportunities uh, to succeed and all of them succeed but you know that's the American dream, right? Take a shot at it and, uh, and hope to succeed. And uh, I think that what we're doing here is uh, is an important part of that. So, okay. anyone else? Okay, we'll take a vote. All in favor of uh, supporting the Discover the Blue Regional Tourism Campaign in the amount of twenty five hundred dollars, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to mention the Chamber's annual dinner meeting is a week from tomorrow. And if you didn't see the invitation, I'm going to leave a few of them over here on the table. So it's open if anybody would like to come and hear more about some of the other things that we're doing at the Chamber for Marine City. Thank you very much. Thanks, Georgia. Next up, we have a letter of understanding for employment status change. Finance Director, Treasurer. Mr. Gaber. Uh, Mary Ellen, uh, I guess, uh, was discussed during our budget workshops and the way we had planned, uh, retired beginning January 3rd. This is just a basic letter that says this is what the hours shall work, the hourly pay. Um, there is a couple weeks of uh, vacation compensation in there, but that's in lieu of any comp time or overtime, and we know there's going to be some, especially with the budget coming up, um, and even right now a little bit because we have one person off uh, in the Treasurer Accounting's office. They've been off since the 1st of December. Due back, I believe, next week is when we think they're going to be back. So um, anything else falls back to the Policy and Procedure Manual, which talks about what kind of benefit levels uh, part-time employees have, which is basically zero. So um, it's just a simple agreement. Okay. Questions, comments? No, I think it's a win-win situation for, for the city. We have a finance director who has um, had a 100% uh, rating of this past um, uh, budget uh, analysis from uh, McBride, mainly McBride. Um, it's, it's a part-time position that um, she herself has, has worked up by making the office um, very efficient and I certainly support that. In fact, I move that we um, agreed to the employment of Mary Ellen McDonald as financial director. Support. Okay, we have a motion to support. Any more discussion? Commissioner Hendrick. Okay, sorry, I'm going to take some time here. Um, do you know what her retirement pay is per no. year? Is she basically doing the same job or less? She's doing the same job. Okay. Um, now, she switched some work over to the deputy treasurer, but I don't know what that breakdown looks like. So, <clears throat> so there is an amount of work. There's some, there's some amount that shifted, but it's primarily she's the finance director, treasurer, and she's doing all of that function, and she shifted a little bit of the payables and some other stuff that direction <clears throat> because there was room to do that. All right. Um, I guess my concern with this whole deal is that at budget time she stated she wanted to keep working 10 more years. So I'm kind of concerned why would you retire 
and just not continue to work full time. Because she came of age of retirement. She has an opportunity to do that. I mean, I, I can't answer that question. The twenty-seven fifty per hour, that includes a 10%, almost a 10% increase? No, it's, uh, it is a 8.4%, 8 .8 but she's only working 75% of it, so it equals about 43000 a year in salary. Our base salary for that position would be 50000 plus full benefits. So uh, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of a 30 $35,000, dollars $36,000 annual savings by doing this. Okay, what justifies the 8.4% increase? Because we typically have done that for part-time help. We typically have two price schedules, both in um, unionized contracts as well as, uh, well, they came out of the unionized contract. If it was a full-time rate, because there were benefits involved, it was less than a part-time rate with no benefits involved. Okay. I just feel doing this is just going to cause problems with other employees. Um, I mean, who, who wouldn't want to retire, come back to work, and work, make more money than you were making before and work less? I mean, that's, that's a good deal. But she's not making more money than she was making before because she's working less. So she's not making more money than she was making before. Well, she gets an 8.4 percent increase. No, she's not. She's only working 75 percent of the hours she worked before. So do the math. What about she's still she made 60k. This she made 60k. She's going to make 43. She's making less money. That's still darn good for getting a retirement and collecting from the I city. When we could have just had her kept on the payroll. <laughs> Instead, we're going to double dip here. All right, well, let's move on to something else here. How come the hours are different oh, from, what time does everybody else start? Let me ask 7 that. 7.30. What time? 7.30. Okay, so why is she starting earlier at 7 a.m.? Because she's only working 30 hours a week. That gives her two hours before they allow people to um, it call works, in. It works the same. I mean, she's working 30 hours, and that was the schedule we decided would work the best. She has somebody in the department when they're back to work that starts at 7.30, and that's the deputy treasurer. So there's someone there to take calls for that department at that time. Well, it just makes more sense that everybody should work the same time. It works fine this way. Might work fine for her, but might not work fine for all the other employees that got to start at 7.30. Um, All right, let me get back to my questions. Um, now, in, there's nothing in this agreement, and I know our policies and procedures um, need some work. I went through them trying to look through some of the stuff. We really don't have a section for part-time. We don't have a section for rehiring a retiree. And all the sections are out of whack with the numbers, so it was hard to follow. Which, I don't know what you're looking at. The, the city's policy and procedure manual. The, the big man. Oh, I don't, I don't know what version you have there. What the, I've what's got the, the version, data? last version, February 9th, 2010. No. It's been updated There's one out there times. for 2012. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I want to make the commission aware that any updates to that has to come through here, and they haven't been. Even the stuff from February of 2010. The commission has to approve all updates. So there's been a lot of updates. We haven't approved them, so I'm in talks with the attorney on what ramifications that's going to mean to us. My other issue with this is this person was working part-time for Cotterville Township for the last couple of years, and I believe it was almost at the same time she was working for here. I don't know. She wasn't working on Marine City hours when she worked there. She may have worked the weekends over there or what have you. I can't answer that question. These were during the week. I have I I talked to some people out there. I can't. I, I guess if you have proof that that happened during the week, then I I'd guess be more I would than happy to look at that. If there was some type of clause to make sure that that, that type of activity wouldn't go on. You know, With regards to what? That if we hire a person, they work full-time here. And they're Mary not Ellen doing another full-time here. Okay. I know she gave Cotterville some help because they were in trouble, but I know that was restricted for the weekends. Those weekends. 
Now, maybe she got a call from somebody asking a question, but that she's been at the office. She hasn't. <clears throat> All right, um, I went over the fact that there's nothing in here for part-time workers, which there's just a definition, which so I, I think we need some rules for that. Um, the thing is, is this what, what are you looking at again? New policies and procedures. Again, there, the, it was updated for part-time employment, I believe, in 2011. Well, I asked you for the latest version not too long ago, and you, this is what I got. That's not the one I gave you. It's the one I have. I don't know where you got that from. Or when you got it. Well, I guess, can I get an updated sure. version? And do you have an old version so we know what the updates were to compare to with what's been changed? Yeah. Okay, I need both of those. So I guess I'm going to ask about the 80 hours vacation time. Or paid leave. I'm sorry. If she's only working 60 hours or 30 hours a week, why won't we just give her 60 hours for a two week? Or is she doing a I told 30, you it was 30. in lieu of comp hours and or of overtime. So it's just a flat number on an annual basis. It has nothing to do with whether she works 20 hours a week, 60 hours a week, or what have you. But you could give her overtime if you want to. She didn't want it. And our policy for part-time help, it's in lieu of comp time. So. She wanted the time off, and it, it was fair. And that's the agreement you made? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I just think that until we get these personal policy and procedures kind of squared away, I'm a little concerned at approving this. I got. I, I, I mean, we use part-time help all over the, the city. This mm -hmm. is not the first part-timer. That's true, but right. they're not being, everyone's not being dealt with in the same manner. <coughs> yes, they are. I mean, you, you took the person over at the DPW, which happens to be a relative. You cut her hours. Wait a minute, what's that got to do with it? Well, nothing. I'm trying to talk about part time help. It's the same situation. Can the rest of us get on this? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner yeah. Turner, you had questions? Well, I just. I, I didn't know I was done yet. I, I called you time to ask, let him ask a question. I, I can come back to you. Okay. Go ahead. So putting aside assumptions and speculation, performance has been outstanding. Outstanding. Right? City would not have to retrain anybody. Nobody. So no disruption of work. And how much did you say we would say? Somewhere between thirty and thirty-five thousand annually. Okay, sounds good. Um, and keep in mind, there is a long-term goal here that at some point, when the deputy treasurer retires that I'd really like to swap those positions for which one is the full-time, part-time. And by that time, they both would be gone, so we'd have to put a training plan in, but I would like the treasurer finance director to be the full-time position and the other one to be the part-time position. But that doesn't work right now. This works very well right now. We basically aren't going to miss a heartbeat. Sounds good. Thank you. I called the question. I wasn't finished. I still had the full She's called the question. I have support. Love the way you run a meeting, Charlie. I have Obvious. support for the calling the question. No. None. Okay. Can I say something? Oh. She called the question. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay. All in favor of? Uh, there's no, support. no. There was oh, there's no. Support. I'm sorry. There's no support. And there was no I'm vote, sorry. So it's still open. It's, it's still yeah. open. Let, let's go back to Commissioner Hendrick for her. Okay, I'd like to make a point about this whole issue that we're not going to miss a beat. I put together a proposal at budget time that we could have, uh, if this treasurer was doing the good job, and she trained our deputy treasurer to do the exact same job, which after 14 years she should be. There's no reason why we couldn't use that person who's only making $15 an hour, hire another part time to replace that to do all the work and you'd save even more money. Okay. Commissioner Melly? Yeah. I, I wanted to say, I don't know if you're aware of uh, Michigan unemployment right now. I don't know if anybody knows the stat is 8.9% right now, unemployment. And um, I'm a strong believer in getting new blood into the system. Um, when somebody wants to retire, that's telling me they want to retire, you know. 
and I bid them well. I have no grounds uh, not to let them retire. Um, but I feel as though that because of unemployment being so low, I always love to see new blood coming into the system. Mm -hmm. And that way we keep our city vibrant and keep on going. And of course, you're going to learn through the ropes as you go along. But I, I am a strong, I have nothing against Mary Ellen. She's done a fine job and everything else like that. But when somebody wants to retire, they want to retire. And I felt like, well, fine, retire. Let's get some new blood and let's open up. Let's get some uh, resumes going and to see what's out there. Because I, I know you say you're saving money, but she's also collecting retirement money plus her other wages. To me, in my book, that's making more money. And I just feel as though that because of the unemployment rate, I would love to see some new blood in our system, at least take some applications. And if you say, you know what? Um, there's nobody really qualified that can fit the shoes. Well, then, then we did our homework. But if we come across somebody that's going to work for $15 an hour that is quite capable of doing the job, I mean, I, I'm in the business of trying to save money for the city. If we can save money, that's all my outlook. And also with the unemployment rate, let's employ a new employee. Let's get uh, this. If we can improve employment, you know, maybe they might want to stay in our city, and buy a home or something. Okay, I'd like to respond to that. First of all, yes, unemployment is at 8.9%. However, the vast majority of finance experts, treasurers, et cetera, people with the required qualifications for this position, those are people that are not on the unemployment line right now, unfortunately. And they don't work for $15. And they don't work for $15 an hour. Second of all, um, it's not a job that I personally would like to put in the hands of someone that's going to learn the ropes on the job. Um, we're in a very tough economic time across the nation, and I don't want to put someone in the finance position of our city to run that portion of it, and they're going to learn on the job. So. That's my take on that. Um, yeah, there's people in all fields that are on the unemployment line, but um, in not, not that necessarily have the qualifications that are required by law to take a job like this. I just Commissioner one, Just one quick comment on that. <laughs> all right, there are a lot of people out there. In fact, I know a few. But here's the issue. Out in the townships, they all use the same system. And in the townships, every time you have an election and they re-elect a new treasurer, that person has to have no qualifications to learn a job. They learned it on the job. It's not that difficult. They have a system now. They put the information in. Yeah, you so have two I mean, townships right now, East China and Cotterville, that are being looked at by the county mm -hmm. and the state because that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And don't forget Worth Township and the mess that they're still, in. They're still, that's just still the way it works. It's that's not that you cannot learn it. It's the way it operates. It's not the way it works. It doesn't necessarily work. Well, it does work. Commissioner Melly, you had something else? Yeah. yeah. Can I just make a comment? Can we just try and just have an open uh, pulse for one month? It's up to how this board votes. Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is, can we table it instead of making a commitment now and make a posting? of a job applicant and just see what's out there. You might be surprised what's out there. That's all I'm saying. There's a lot of qualifying people that are hurting. And you know what? If they take a little less money, that might make the difference for them. I don't know. But all I'm saying is have an opportunity. Usually most places will post any position if you go into um, any professional uh, job applicants or whatever. Is always a posting. That's all I'm saying. It could be for one month. That's all I'm asking. Can we post it for one month and just let's see what happens? Are you making a motion? Can I make a motion? Do we already have if a we, motion on the board? It doesn't matter. He can make. Let him carry through with his. I would like to make a proposal motion that if we uh, make a posting for one month and see what is out there and then. 
you know, that will answer your questions. If, if nobody is qualified or whatever, then so be it. At least we did our part and have an equal opportunity employment. That's all I'm saying. Anyone else? I'll support his motion. I don't think that motion's in order. It's not. Oh. You're correct. Motion's out of order. You can't put a motion on a motion. You can motion you can, to you, you table can, it, but you can't yeah, you motion can, okay, another can I make motion. motion to postpone it. Okay, can I make a motion to postpone it? I'm sorry. I didn't follow okay. procedures. Um, I'll second his. Okay, we have a motion to postpone. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 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 Motion fails. Okay. Any further comment? One last thing I'd like to say is if people have side jobs and have second incomes and so on and so forth, it's really not our concern. Um, all in favor of approving the letter of understanding for employment status change, finance director, treasurer. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next we have an agreement with St. Clair County for school elections. I'll let the clerk talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a housekeeping. Yeah, yes. So this is kind of a housekeeping issue. Um, this comes before us every four years. Um, we need to have authorization, or I should say, you need to give me authorization to um, execute this agreement with St. Clair County Clerk's Office. This is with regards to the coordination of the East China School District elections. Okay. Not that I'm against it, but what happens if we don't give you approval? That's a good question, Nobody knows because nobody's ever yeah. done that, right? That's correct. <laughs> Everyone does. Um, you know, we can we can opt out with the county, and then it's going to be between me and the school district to run the election. Uh, this way, the county clerk is the one that's the coordinator and takes care of everything. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, question. Yes, sir. The reference to House Bill uh, 4824. I'm just curious about that. I tried looking that up, and it doesn't have anything to do with elections. Well, this agreement came directly from the county. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I got it right here. <laughs> yeah, it, would all, it would depend on House Bill 4824. What year? What year. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But if it's not a bill anymore, that means it's a law, so it would be a public act. Right. right. Yes. That is correct. So if it's a bill, that means it's a bill, and this bill is about license plates. <laughs> so I was just, just trying to do my due diligence, <laughs> here, and this is what I'm finding out. Very good. And I That's appreciate that, year. and I will bring it to the Yeah, you, I would, oh. you might want to ask the county clerk. <laughs> What public act that became, if that's what we're doing. I have doing a meeting so. with him on the 29th uh -huh. in the county. You want, a, so you want we'll this? I'll, I'll give this to you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it mentions on here about uh, reimbursement requests uh, to the district. Do they compensate us for something? Yeah, they always have. Okay. When we have submitted our um, reimbursement cost to the school district, we get every penny back. Okay. Thanks. Anyone? Motions, anything? Yeah, I move that we approve the agreement between St. Clair County and the City of Marine City uh, <laughs> for the coordination of the Election Coordinating Committee for support. East Trends. Okay, we have a motion to support. Any more discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Carries. Takes us to board appointments. First, we have one vacancy, term expiring December 31st, 2015, for an alternate on the Board of Review. We have an application from Andrew Markle and an application from Mary Weslow. Um, that can be anyone's appointment or uh, nomination, am I correct? I thought it was um, the mayor for Mayor, yep. Is that one the mayor? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Due to his we put the pressure on you. Thanks. <laughs> That's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I just didn't want to step on any toes there. Um, in light of his many, many, many years of experience and service on this board, 
and his desire to be an alternate at this point, I would like to nominate Andrew Markle to the Board of Review uh, for the alternate. You have one vacancy and then you need an alternate. Oh, you, oh see, I misread that. I okay. thought that's how it was yep. supposed to be. Yes. Okay. Yep. Then let me correct that. I would like to nominate Andrew to the full term and Mary Weselow to the alternate position. Do you need a support for that? Yes. Support. support. I've got support. Any discussion? All in favor of appointing Andrew Markle to the one-year term, or the, the 2015 expiration term and the alternate term going to Mary Weselow, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Finally, we filled that alternate position, and we appreciate that, Mary. It's been a couple years now, hasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Next, we have the Dangerous Building Board of Appeals. We have two vacancies, terms expiring December 31st, 2014. We have one application, well-qualified individual again, Jerry Carlin. And I would like to nominate Jerry Carlin to one of the two vacancies. Second. Give me a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carries. Thank you, Jerry. Next, we have two vacancies on the Historical Commission. Uh, term expiring December 31st, 2015. The only one we have more applications than we have vacancies. <laughs> We have applications from Becky Lepley, Todd May, and Kim Turner. And that one can come from anyone, am I correct? Isn't it just planning? I believe it's planning TIFA and the Board of Appeals that are. So anyone want to make <laughs> any nominations? I'm leaving it wide open for anyone. I'll make nominations. Go ahead. Um, I'll make nominations for the two vacancies of Todd May and Kim Turner. Support. Okay. Discussion? I think that we've got three great uh, applicants. <laughs> yes. It's unfortunate that we don't have three vacancies. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> Maybe we can get one to take one of the other boards. Well, the, the only thing I'd like to point out is, is that if the uh, new historical ordinance goes through, then Todd May wouldn't be eligible. If that ever happens at some point, it just point that out. I'd worry about that when that comes up. Yeah, Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Um, right before the meeting began, um, one of the current Historical Commission members um, came to visit with me, and she is going to be putting in her resignation. So whatever two you put in here, you are going to have that third one that yeah. you can appoint probably. There you go. In well, there. doesn't that work out <laughs> nicely for everybody? Um, she's going to give me her letter of resignation with Okay, thank you. Okay. That's great information. And I'd just like to add that that just helps out because they are all three qualified. And I was thinking Todd and Kim as well, since Becky's working with the police department as a chaplain right now, kind of spreads the love a little bit. So any other discussion? Okay, all in favor of appointing Todd May and Kim Turner to the Historical Commission, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next we go to TIFA. Two midterm vacancies. We have one term expiring June 30th, 2013. One term expiring June 30th, 2014. We have two applications, one from uh, Robert Lepley and one from Ray Squires. And I would like to nominate Ray Squires to the term expiring June 13, 2030, 2013. Bob Lepley to the term expiring June 30, 2014. Support. A motion and support. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, my neighbor, Chuck, I'm, don't, I can't pronounce his last name, Signore, the guy that ran the Maritime Signore, Days. Yep. Uh, he approached me I, on Friday. Now, I didn't know if he was on time because he wanted to put an app in for maritime days. Was he able to come down? 
for Maritime. Maritime uh, not Maritime, I'm sorry, uh, for Tiffelborn. He was on the... He could have come in last Friday. Yeah. We would have walked was in anything able to that make we had it? I didn't know if he was able to make uh, If I don't see his name on he, him. He, oh, no. He, he never came. He never came in because... He certainly could have, but no, he did not. He'll have another opportunity in June. No, I just... He very... Uh, he didn't come in? I, I, we would have walked in any Normally they'll walk in any applications that they right. get for boards because we are always looking for something somewhere, so. Okay, because uh, <coughs> I, I just draw that if he does put an application in because he ran maritime days very mm -hmm. good. Let him know there's still I, a vacancy on planning, a couple of vacancies on planning. And zoning board of, and zoning. And zoning board of appeals, so zoning board get, him, get him in. Yep, absolutely. Okay, I'll see what he can say. Oh, too. All right, thank you. Thanks. Any other discussion? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I'd like to request that we vote on these separately. Okay, we can do that. Well, I think we are. No, the He's only made just... one nomination so far. I made one nomination and appointed oh. him two certain terms. Right. He's nominated Ray yeah. Squires for the term that expires 2013. That's what we're discussing right now. Oh, okay. Well, I still want to make sure we do them separately because the other ones we did kind of all together. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor of appointing Ray Squires to the TIFA for the term expiring June 30th, 2013, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 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 Motion carries. All of um, all in favor of appointing Robert Lepley to the TIFA term expiring June 30th, 2014, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 Motion carries. Okay. It's the end of that process till we get some more applications in for other boards. We still need planning and zoning. We still need planning and zoning, folks. This is the hot one right now. We can all complain. We can all participate. Next, we have financial business. Disbursements including payroll of $474,472.44. I move that we um, pay disbursements including payroll of $474,472.44. Support. Discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hendrick? Yes. Commissioner Lovett? Yes. Commissioner Milley? Yes. Commissioner Phelan? Yes. Commissioner Spacharjic? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have preliminary financial statements for the month of December of 2012. I move that we accept the preliminary financial statements for December 2012. Support. Motion and support. Discussion? Yeah, just uh, on, the, on the police budget. They're at 56%, right? Yeah. Yeah. They've got probably um, no Stone Guard money has been transferred over for 2012-13 yet. So some of it's sitting in the general fund, but it hasn't been transferred to their revenue side yet. And um, they have some um, municipal ticket money that hasn't been transferred over. When they do that, they should be right about 50.1, or right at the 50% mark. So they're about $55,000. Yeah, that, the total of that oh, is is about now. 60 to 70, somewhere in that in that range. <laughs> Anyone else? All in favor of approving the preliminary financial statements for December 2012, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Carries. Takes us to the city manager's report. I'm going to wing it on a couple of things here. We had a worker comp review with uh, MML, which is our carrier, on uh, January 9th. Um, <clears throat> he met with Rick Ames and myself, and then he did a review over at DPW. Uh, I guess the important thing to remember out of this is our loss rate is at a 0 0.79, which is below one, well below one, and um, makes a difference in our insurance premium of somewhere to the tune of $7,000 a year. So uh, we're doing well. Uh, we did have five um, 
what they call injuries in 2012, but they were all very minor, had very little dollars associated with them and no lost time. So um, uh, they're doing a good job over there. So that was a, a good thing. Uh, we usually have an annual review with them, and then he'll select a different part, department to go look at uh, just to evaluate. Uh, the bridge is still scheduled to close on Monday the 4th. Um, as you can see, there are signs laying on the ground of the area, but um, you won't be able to get through on Brown, I believe it is, because that will be closed for that little intersection right there. Um, South Bell will be opened up to Brown Street, but you will not be able to get to Brown. And um, Main Street, um, the side street that I call Main, North Main there, you won't be able to get to that. That will be closed off as part of that intersection. So just keep that in mind. People have to go out to water and come back around that, that, that are in that area. Um, I'm assuming they're going to start immediately once they get it closed up. And within a day or two, you're going to probably within two weeks, you're not going to see a bridge there anymore. It'll be just the pilings in the water. They're going to move fast on that. Because um, the bigger issue is they have to put about $600,000 worth of steel in the ground you'll never see. So that'll start right after they get it out. Um, they claim they'll be on schedule, though. So Monday, we, it'll probably close at latest Tuesday, but Monday, February 4th. Yes? Um, has the Blue Water bus people been notified? Yes, they've been notified. <coughs> Second thing, if they're going to be doing a lot of pounding in there, do we have to be concerned about a few of those houses that are older? And I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how much of that is going to translate out, especially <coughs> since it's in the water. Um, a lot of that gets dampened uh, when it's in the water versus driving pilings right up on land. But we'll, we'll monitor that. We're planning on monitoring that. We will have weekly meetings with the contractor, um, you know, to discuss any of the issues that come out there. Um, I'm not sure exactly the timing or, or the day of the week yet, but uh, we will have a weekly meeting uh, with them to review any issues or status that happen. Um, Changes, <clears throat> yes, our fine clerk came in and said, look what I have today. And there is changes under Act 253. Now, I'm going to, you can look this up, okay, but I'll just go over a few of them. Um, absentee voters to show ID. Um, voters applying for an absentee ballot at the clerk's office will require to show ID under changes included in Public Act 253 of 2012 or sign an affidavit, so there's going to be some changes there, okay? Um, citizens will need to show an ID um, when registering to vote in person. Um, here's an important one that we're going to bring back to the board later on. Cities can opt out of even November elections. Even it will trump the charter. So. Um, Diane and I talked about that this afternoon. We're going to come back with some proposals later on this, uh, this year prior to the primary as a suggestion because we can save somewhere in the neighborhood of ten dollars or $12,000 in that off-year election because we have to take the, it's the full bore for us. Um, most of them are on the even numbers now. Uh, they've either changed or, you know, they've changed their charter or changed whatever they had to do to get off this off-year election so they're not running it. So that's a potential. The only issue comes in the first time you do it, and we're looking at a couple of cities that have done it to see did they extend it one year on each of the terms or, or how they handle that before we come back to the board. So um, that's an option. Um, the other thing is, is they have a fast-moving recall reform bill <laughs> that was signed. A couple of things that came out of that. Um, this last time we had a recall, you know, we had an election for a recall and then we had four vacancies and not a board to function, and we had to go to the county. One of the things that came out of that is you're going to have a recall election, but it's basically going to have anybody else that's going to run as well. So it's really a re-election is what it ends up being. You're not going to end up with two elections, the election to recall and then the whatever election required to restaff, okay, or repopulate. Recall it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be into one. <laughs> Uh, the other thing uh, is is that the signatures are only good for 60 days once you start collecting them, not 90. So they've shortened up the useful life of signatures on the recall. 
Um, if you're a two-year term, nothing has changed. No recall in the first six months, no recall in the last six months. If you're a two-year or greater two- to four-year uh, term, it's no recall in the first year, no recall in the last year. So those are the basics out of that. Right. Right? Um, that takes care of that. Yes. Didn't, didn't they change the um, what how you could the verbiage that had to be for the recall now? Yeah, too? they said how in addition to uh, it uh, in reviewing a petition for sufficient clarity, the board of state canvassers shall also review the recall petition to determine factual factualness. Yeah. Okay, but they didn't define that. <coughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, the board of, of state canvassers, uh, but for a local recall, it would be the county. The county, right? Yeah. yeah. Also yeah. on the on the IDs, the voter IDs, can they they can still do an affidavit at at the polls? At the polls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, so he only and, I I just kind of highlighted some of the things that came out of that, just so you're aware of it. Yeah. Of that. I'm even, sorry, that's okay. And even like when John read about. How now when you want to request an absentee ballot, you need to come in and present your ID. We've been doing that for oh, several years. Yeah. So that's nothing new to Marine City's voters. Um. I went to a workshop yesterday for the, from the DNR. There may be a couple of possible grant opportunities for land purchase if we can cut the right deal and we keep the application under a hundred grand. Um, it's through the trust, the DNR trust. Um, I'm going to have Lynn look at a couple of things, and I've got a meeting with one of the property owners tomorrow to discuss timing because it's always a timing issue with these grants. Um, this from start to finish is 18 to 20 months before you even know officially if you have the money. So um, I know I talked to... Uh, to you, Ray, or you talked to me with regards to the beach, there may be some rehab opportunity there. So I might have a discussion with you, and then I'll put a lid on it. No guarantee, but I, the workshop was informative. You get at least a chance to see what they're willing to look at and what they're not willing to look at. So uh, that was worthwhile. Um, update on EVIP. Uh, that's due February 1. I should have it done on Monday. It'll probably go in on Tuesday of next week. Uh, that's basically shared services is this, this portion around. So um, we're in really good shape with that. And we've even, even since the last update have made a couple of offers out to surrounding cities for different positions that have, obviously didn't pan out, but they're going to show up on the list as at least an attempt. So uh, if they say no, I can't, I can't force can't them force to do them. that. Um, um, we're going to fill the ice rink probably next week. Uh, the reason it hasn't been filled to date is there hasn't been any frost on the ground to hold water there. Um, this week is at least getting some cold weather and it really hasn't been getting too much above freezing during the day. So <coughs> Rick said if we have a cold weekend and it holds through, he's going to try to fill it next week and we'll see what happens. And uh, <coughs> the truck came in and it's ready for service. It looks nice. So um, we did get that. And that's all I have. Okay. Any commissioners? Commissioner Miller, let's start with you. Yeah. Um, I want, yeah I'll be short. Uh, the sign on, um, it's right on, you know, it's supposed to be there on King Road and in front of the Gers, and it's about parking um, from snow removal between December 31st to March 31st. Um, when we had that snowfall, I was surprised how many cars were on the street. And to me, I thought our DBW did a fantastic job of cleaning up the snow. But besides all the cars that were in the street, I was kind of disappointed because, you know, it, it stopped them from doing a, a thorough job and then going around cars. And <coughs> if somebody's saying that if they had a citation or a ticket, uh, there's no more signs. I, I didn't see the sign anymore, and I just want to inquire about the sign. Uh, about putting it back, and it used to be right there on King Road and the Gers, right on the cross section. It used to be right there on the two metal poles are there, but the sign is not. Don't know anything unless uh, I will <coughs> check into it tomorrow. All right, thank you. Anything else, right? No, that's okay. it. Commissioner Hedrick. Um, the snow and the sidewalks. Um, 
I, I'm glad, you know, the DPW took care of everything, but I guess what I'm going after is beyond them. Um, I know we've had the rain and the snow's gone, but when we did have the snow, the sidewalk that goes from Chartier all the way to Kmart Plaza, half of it wasn't done, including the court. And I saw a gentleman in his wheelchair in the street trying to get back from that mall to Chartier because he could not use the sidewalk. And there's so many of them. I think a lot of the businesses need to warn their contractors um, right behind the chamber. They took that big park lot and they piled four or five foot right onto the sidewalk on market. Um, the county mental health building, they never did their sidewalk. And I know they're working on the building, but they own it. They got to own up to it. I think we need to do a better job. And then you got the usual people that it's the same people that don't do theirs on a regular basis, but the majority of the people try to get them done. I think we got to do a little bit better for all these people that do use the sidewalks. I mean, I walk in the winter. Uh, I walk in the street because the sidewalks, which, you know, you take a chance with the drivers. Um, but I think we got to do a little bit more with our code enforcement to try to get some of these done. Down Parker, a lot of the businesses on the east side, they had a little bitty footpath. So if you did have a wheelchair or you were, you're not going to get down that. I mean, we've got to do something more on some of these sidewalks to get them done in the winter. Well, I talked to uh, our building official with regards to that, and we're going to put a, a very quick plan together that looks at at least the business district, and he works, he comes in town three days a week. So if we have a snow and he's in town, he's going to take a quick pass and do, provide a letter that says, hey, you got... Yeah. 24 hours to take care of it, okay? And we're going to at least do the business district like that. Uh, what we decided on residential, just because it's a manpower issue at the end of yeah. the day right now, is that we'll do that by exception. If we get a phone call after 24 hours and somebody says, hey, they haven't done this, then we'll go take a look at okay. that within the residential areas, okay? Mm -hmm. um, like I explained to the to the gentleman in public comment, we did kind of have a perfect storm this time. I'm not yeah, making excuses, right. but <coughs> we had two major water leaks. We had two four-day holidays, and we had a heavy snowfall. And we had our full complement of DPW working, which is four plus Rick, and we had two part-time people. And then we had a list of call-ins for plowing, and because of the holidays, the, the nobody wanted to come in. So, yeah, and, and I, the DPW you know, did a great I, job. I got nothing I'm against them. I'm not making them. excuses. It's just that. This is outside the DPW. Right, yeah. Th this isn't them. They but, do a um, good job. But, uh, Brian and I talked about that um, um, at the beginning of this week, and we're going to kind of make a little map and a little procedure with regards to businesses versus residential and see if we can't do a better job just with that alone. Yeah, some of these, I mean, especially that one going to Kmart down yeah. there. That, that and normally was, we, plot, we, get, we get a lot of that because it's, Part of the bike path system down there. Yeah, so. but it was scary to see that poor guy in the street. Because we didn't even get to parks till well after the holiday. Right. I mean, that just what happens. So. But I hear you. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Commissioner Phelan? All right, I just wanted to let everybody here know that uh, after a lot of thought, I've decided not to seek re election for the, uh, the seat and uh, look forward to serving the the rest of this term and, uh, and get some new blood in here. Okay. Thank you. Precious. Um, I just want to add on to uh, Commissioner Hendricks. Um, I've had the same comments and the same gentleman, but from this side of town, was trying to get back to uh, Chartier also and couldn't get down Parker. And very, very dangerous situation for him. And I happen to have a flat tire, so I ended up having to walk to church, and I was in the street most of the time um, going down Broadway. So we do, um, and it isn't, again, it has nothing to do with the DPW. This are businesses and, and people in, in this community. We need to take that respect. And Sunday was like four days. Days, I think after the major storm yeah. so and and that was the four-day one the two-day one the, the little ones we can walk through yeah. but the other stuff was impossible so um, I we're gonna try we, something different yeah exactly okay um, the other one was the um, the water main break itself I read about it in the paper the next day and it said the Times Herald that that afternoon at three o'clock you know you were supposed to be boiling your water so I'm calling everybody I know that yeah you know you got to be boiling your water oh again I said, what do you mean again oh it happened yesterday 
Um, people aren't finding out, and I understand that the DPW it was very, very busy, but I think we need some type of emergency system, uh, even a volunteer calling system that, that we're able to notify people um, when there's an emergency like that. Um, just something we notified all the restaurants. Uh, they personally either, they called them and notified all the restaurants mm -hmm. that there was a potential boil um, for 24 hours. We contacted the county health department. We talked, con contacted Homeland Security. We went through all of our procedural lists, okay? Unfortunately, there is not a good system in Marine City or in most cities to get that word out. In fact, I think it even ended, did it end up on Channel 6? It yes, it did. Yes, yes. Because I wasn't was here on that Channel we put Six Rick, before it even hit the Rick newspapers. We were doing um, it, so. But let me add this: a year ago, we launched the Alert FM system, that is a countywide, and for forty bucks, a radio can be purchased, and you'll get any notifications yeah. that anybody needs. That's true. What so I, yeah. what I found: a lot of people found out through Facebook. Yep. It was posted. Mm -hmm. Yep. That gets out to a lot yeah. of people. So. Yeah, so yeah right. just know there are people who you know. Now. Did, uh, probably didn't need to boil. I mean, we got very close, and we just didn't want to take the chance. So that's why it was only for 24 hours. And one last item, um, just for your information, the marker calendars, uh, the Friends of City Hall have partnered with the Civil War reenactors um, for the 2013 Marine City Heritage Day, which is going to be held a little earlier this year. It will be held on September the 24th. Could it be so warmer? Might be warmer. <laughs> it was cold yeah. last year. It was. Cold. <laughs> it was so yeah, it was windy too. Yeah. So hopefully, it'll be nice. Okay. Mr. Turner? I've been quiet. I've been, I'm quite, I've been back waiting. To you. I've been waiting. Oh. Is it my turn? It's your <laughs> turn, sir. Well, they, they talked about everything that I wanted to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, John knows. I, I was on the phone to him yeah. like about the s sidewalks. And, and it wasn't just private ones. It was city ones, too. So mm -hmm. th he promised they were going to work on a better plan. The, um, I did want to talk about the, uh, the uh, water boil situation, too. Uh, that morning, I happened to get up early, and I went to the shower, turn it on, and there was nothing. <laughs> It's just a little drip. So if I would have gotten up a little bit later, I wouldn't have known about it either. And talking it over with my wife, you know, the best, the best system is the neighborhood system. Mm -hmm. It is just friends telling friends because we started calling people. And as soon as you know that water pressure is gone, you know the boiler is <laughs> coming next. Right. Yeah. So what I would suggest to the people in Marine City is make sure you know your neighbors. You know, uh, because it might sound strange, but I guarantee you there's a lot of people in this town that couldn't tell you who lives across the street or two houses down. And just make a point to know who your neighbors are. And you might find there's some elderly people or some dis disabled people, yeah. uh, people that maybe don't have access to the Internet or to cable. And when, when you discover those people, make a point to knock on their door and, and let them know when, when something's going on. And I think that's one of the best ways. Facebook... You know, that was great. Uh, that, that got posted on there, and that helped a lot of people out. Uh, the, the problem with most of the alert systems is, is you have to turn something on. Right. You've got to either turn on the radio, you got to turn on your computer, you got to turn on the TV, you have to turn something on. So that cell phone thing will be nice, but then you have to have a cell phone. There's always going to be somebody without a cell phone. So I was doing a little more thinking about it, and, and any, any way you can do to, to help alert people, I think, would be good. And I think... We're long overdue in this city for an electronic sign. I think we're long overdue. I think we have some really prime spots on Parker. We got the either the police station, the police library. station is already set up for one. Right. I mean, we've already done the pre one. All right. So I mean, because that's that's kind of passive, and you're, you're driving, it's in your face. We already have a few of those uh, signs on Parker. And you can't help but read them. They're, they're, they're just there. And then that's just a few more people in that neighborhood network that would maybe get the idea to, to notify some people. I would suggest that maybe we get some prices. And I would volunteer to take a project like that to TIFA uh, because most of those locations are in TIFA districts. 
and I think they would be decent type of projects. And so if we could get some pricing together on a sign, I would volunteer to approach TIFA and maybe see if we can get some funding. But I think we even acquired the streetscape for it. Yes. Because at one but time I, we, I think, we talked I, about that in some detail. Right. I mean, just driving around seeing where I think would be the most effective, I think that stretch on Parker would be great. So you've got you've got this location, you've got the library, you've got the police we station. We already have a pole at PD station. to hang it out. Fire station, right. Yeah. And, and I think that would help. I think we, there's no perfect solution, you know, to an alert system, but that's just one little thing. And yeah. You could use it for electrical. You could you, you could use it for you know promotions to help advertise yep. for all kinds of stuff. I think it's long overdue. And uh, I would, you know, if we need to put it on uh, next week's agenda so we could officially ask the uh, city manager to go out and I'll seek some pricing. I'll start working on something. Yeah. We don't need to, we um, and that was my suggestion. That's that's all I got. Good. So you got? Yep. Well, in the interest of not repeating everything everybody has said, um, have a good evening, everybody, and thank you for attending, and uh, I'll move for adjournment. Second. Motion in a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Thank you all.